Hello and welcome to edupediaworld.com, your favorite portal for online education. Well, today's session we will proceed from where we left in the last session and now we will calculate the project completion time. We will be using the forward and the backward pass methods and in fact this is what is called as the CPM technique or the critical path method technique CPM critical path method and we have taken the same question which we worked out in the last class we have nine activities let's let me redraw the diagram as we had we had the first activity A followed by B from node 2 and then B had two followers C and D so let me show that here C and D C and D and then C the follower of C was uh, E so we have E and F now I'm merging them together because I already know that the follower of these two are one and the same and so we have E and F from there we have uh, G and H now what we can do is we can merge these two also as we have seen previously mm. so let me show H slightly upward so that will be convenient for us this is G and H G and H ending at one node and then finally we have the last job that is job I ending at the last node so let me give the numbering 1 2 3 4 let this be node 5 6 7 and 8 alright also the durations let me mention the durations also A takes 5 days to complete B takes 7 days to complete and C takes 2 days D takes 3 days to complete E takes 1 day G takes 1 day F takes three uh, sorry two days F takes two days to complete H takes three days and finally I takes ten days alright so next let's use the forward and the backward pass methods to find the project completion time and also uh, know the critical path or the critical activity now the forward part method starts forward path method starts from the first node and we proceed in the forward direction till the last node and using the forward path method we will calculate the earliest occurrence at each of these nodes similarly uh, for the backward path method we will calculate the latest occurrence at each of these so this is the earliest and this is the latest at each of these events the nodes as I said are instantaneous moment of time so these are actually the events so here in the first we have we are starting A right away so we are starting at time 0 and when we move on we go to B the second uh, node so here I am at on day 5 the moment I complete my activity A and I'm ready to start or ready to take up the second activity this is my fifth day similarly when moving in the forward direction when I look at when I reach node 3 it would be five days here plus seven days to complete activity B so it will be five plus seven twelve day on the twelfth day I'll be I would have completed my activity B and I would be ready to take up the activity C and D again activity C we see there, there is since there is just one activity coming here so I'll just add up so it will be 12 plus 2 14 on the 14th day I'll be here whereas if I add this it will be 12 plus 3 15 day on the 15th day I'll be here on note 5 now coming to activity 6 activity 6 we see that there are two activities coming and merging at this node note 6 if we look at this activity it will be 14 plus the time duration to complete 
activity E so it will be 14 plus 1 15 so it will be 15th day I'll be here but if suppose I am here at this if I reach this node on the 15th day what happens is that that, that means I'm ready to take up the next activity but activity H has to be started only after the completion of both E and F that is what is mentioned in the condition here therefore and if uh, but on the 15th day I wouldn't have even started my activity F so I need to complete my activity F before I could be before I could take up this activity H therefore it will be 15 plus 2 17 in other words what we can say is that if there is there are two activities merging at a node then during uh, f uh, for the forward pass method we will take up the timing which is the maximum of all the timings and we know how we are calculating this it is the uh, act the timing in the previous uh, at the tail the timing at the previous node plus the duration so it will be 15 plus 2 17 so out of 15 and seven, uh, 17 this is maximum this is higher therefore we will take this same is the case here so again let's see what are the two possibilities one is 14 plus 1 15 and another is 17 plus 3 20 quite naturally we will take 20 because that is the higher value so on the 20th day I'll be here and then finally on the activity uh, at the completion of activity I it will be 20 plus 10 30 so it will take totally 30 days for me to complete the project and this 30 days is actually the flow time of the project so that is that we get using the forward pass method now using the backward pass method we will see we will move backwards now from the eighth node to the first node and see what are the latest occurrence of time possible at each of these nodes now since 30 is the project completion time I would mention here the uh, the latest occurrence also as 30 and then we will work backward going backward since there's just one activity here so it will be 30 minus 10 20 so the latest occurrence at this node also will be 20 coming back from here on this direction from 7 to 6 uh, again there is only one activity so it will be 20 minus 3 is 17 and further in this direction also if we say there's, a, there's just one activity so it will be 17 minus 2 15 and if we take at node 4 well there are two activities which actually are emerging from here okay so there, there are two backward arrows coming back to this act node 4 we will have to check both of these and in the backward pass method we will have to take the minimum of the timings which we have so here when we see it's 20 minus 1 is 19 so one possibility is uh, 19 and another possibility is um, when working from here it will be 17 minus 1 16 so the minimum of these two of course is 16 therefore I will take 16 here again at node 3 we see again there are two possibilities there are two arrows coming backward to node 3 we will have to check both of these so here it is 16 minus 2 14 and this way it's 15 minus 3 which is 12 since 12 is minimum so I will have the latest occurrence here as written as 12 coming backward now since there's just one uh, arrow coming back to this node 2 it will be 12 minus 7 which is 5 and finally it will be 5 minus 5 0 fine so now uh, we see here that there are certain uh, nodes or events where the duration the earliest and the latest occurrence are one and the same whereas there are some others where it's different so the one where you have both the occurrence as same that's called your critical path so this for instance when we t take here we see this 0 to 0 0 5, uh, 5 5 12 17 20 and finally 30 so this is actually my critical path let me uh, show the critical path using a double arrow using this uh, a different color so this is actually your critical path a b d f h and i okay now so let me write here critical path is 
comprising of the activities A, B, not C, we have D, uh, no E, we have F, uh, G, no G also, H and I. Now if we add the duration of the critical path, duration of the critical path, let me sum the duration of the critical path, uh, it will come to be 5 plus 7 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 10 and that comes to be 30 which is exactly the same as the project completion time. Therefore, what we understand is that it is the critical path or the critical activity which actually controls the project completion time. If there is any delay in the execution of any of these activities, definitely there will be a delay in my project completion. Whereas that's not the case with the remaining activities, your activity G, E and C which are not on the critical path. There is some, there is some gap in between and you can always delay to some extent whereas there is no delay allowed on the critical part and that is why they are called as the critical activities. This method, critical path method, actually focuses on the uh, on identifying the critical activities of any project and taking care of them and that's why the name critical path method. Well, regarding the gaps in between of the different how much of time do we have that's called as the slack time or the float time which we will see in the next class.